My prayer is that as we're in this Christmas season together and as we're approaching Christmas Day and all that, is that we remember what it's all about. We remember the, the main event. We don't get caught up in all the exteriors of gifts and music and food and all that. And Lord knows we love all of that, right? But not to forget the true meaning of the season. I heard a story this week. It was about a, a family uh, during the Great Depression. They were unable to afford anything but the bare necessities of life. And one day the news came that a circus was coming to town. Tickets cost only one dollar. The little boy in that family came running home excited and eager to get the money from his dad and, and his father regretfully told him, he said, young, young son, I cannot provide this for you. We don't make enough money, but, but if you will go out and you will just work really hard at different odd jobs and, and you might earn enough to to, um, to purchase a ticket to this circus. And his dad said, I'll even help you. I'll pitch in what you're not able to do. So this boy worked feverishly all, all the time. He just worked uh, all that he could. And a few days before the circus came to town, he found that he had just enough, including his dad's contribution. And so he took his money and he ran off to buy his circus ticket. The day the circus came to town, he grabbed his ticket and rushed to the main street where he stood on, on the curb to watch the circus parade go by. He was thrilled to see the clowns and the elephants and all the performers. And, and a clown came over dancing over to him and, this, and the boy put his ticket in that clown's hand. And he eagerly watched as the rest of the parade went by him. And after the parade, the boy rushed home and his father well, he, he, was, he, he told his father that he had uh, been to the circus and just how much he enjoyed it, how fun this circus was. And the father was surprised that this boy was already home. And he asked him to describe what you saw at the circus. So the boy told of this parade that went down Main Street and of giving his ticket to the clown. And the, the father sadly took the son in his arms in that moment and said, son... You didn't see the circus. All you saw was the parade. And that story reminds me of a lot of us at Christmas time, a lot of people in this world, in our culture, at Christmas time, they get caught up in all the exteriors, right? They get caught up in the carols, the trees, the lights, the gifts, and what they're not, they think they're experiencing what Christmas is all about, but really what they're doing is they're seeing the parade. And not the circus. And my hope for us in this moment and this morning and this day is that we don't miss the main event. That we don't miss the circus for the parade. And my prayer is that we would personally experience the joy of what Christmas is really, really all about. The angel on that, on that day in the Christmas story explained it perfectly when he said this. This is in Luke chapter 2. It said, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. Everybody say, Good news. That will cause great joy. Everybody say, Great joy. All right, say it like you mean it. Great joy for all the people. And I don't know about you, if there was an angel that appeared to me and started talking, I'm going to give him my full attention. Man, I'm going to listen up and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to lean into every word that you're about to tell me. And he goes on to say this, today in the town of David, listen, today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah or the Christ, the Lord. And I just want us to think about this for a few minutes this morning. And if you've never really thought about what Christmas is really all about, I want you to think about with me why this good news, why this news about a Savior is described as great joy. For the next few moments, I just want to share with you four simple thoughts. If you want to jot these down with me in your, in your notes, uh, that would be awesome. But number one... The news about the Savior brings great joy because it is good news for sinners. My goodness, this is good news 
for sinners. The, you think about the shepherds sitting in the darkness. It's, it's like a picture of the lost human race. We're sitting in the darkness of sin and the shadow of death. And you see, we were ungodly. We were dead in our sins. We were dead in our trespasses. We were spiritually cut off. From everything that is God. And we were separated from him. Deserving of his wrath. Oh my goodness. That is horrible news. Merry Christmas everybody. Right? But that's where we were. But God. Everybody say but God. But God showed up who is rich in mercy. And rich in grace. He sent his son into the world to be born of a virgin. To live that sinless life. And to die on that cruel rug cross on our behalf to pay for the sins of the world and then to be resurrected on that third day and now forever he is our risen savior what a gospel that is what good news that is for sinners like me and like you I remember when I first heard the gospel in a way that I really understood I was 17 old, I was invited to a, to, to a special church service in the middle of the country in, in the backwoods of Tennessee. And I heard a preacher preach on the verse from John chapter 3 verse 16. And it said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his one and only son, that whosoever believes upon him will not perish, but he will have everlasting Life and I and I understood that verse and I understood the love of God for the very first time in my life and I responded that day and I gave the Lord my life and I confessed Him as my Lord I confessed Him as my Savior on that day and He completely transformed my life I wonder just a show of hands has Jesus transformed anybody's lives in here can you just testify and say God is good God has changed me he has sent his son and 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 died for me and paid for my sins and my life will never ever be the same you see in Romans chapter 5 Paul says it like this you see at just the right time when we were still powerless look what happened Christ died for the ungodly very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die but let's listen to this but God everybody say it again but God but God demonstrates his own love for us in this while we you and I were yet sinners while we were still sinners look at look at what he did for us Christ died for us for you and for me Paul goes on to say in Romans chapter 6 he said the wages of sin is death the pay of sin the payday of sin what you earn from sin is spiritual death a sin is what separates us from from God but I'm so glad that Paul when he wrote this verse did not stop there he went on to say but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isn't that amazing? And isn't that wonderful news? You know, I mean, I want you to think about it with me this morning. Why is that good news such good news? And why does it bring great joy? It's, it's great, number one, because it is good news for sinners. Number two, this news about the Savior is great because it is true news. It is true news, as opposed to fake news that we hear a lot about these days, right? No, this news is true news. It's not a made-up fairy tale. It's not, a, it's not a legend. It's not something that it was just con, con, uh, conceived by someone's imagination. No, this is real life happenings right here. Luke tells us in the story of, of his account of the gospel, he wants us to know, Luke wants us to know that these things that he is writing in his gospel are absolutely true. They are historically accurate and verified. Like there are eyewitnesses to what happened in the book of, in the book of Luke, in, this in the beginning of the story of Jesus. And at the beginning of Luke's account... He states that he had personally investigated everything carefully 
from the beginning. Let me show it to you. It's over in Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. It says this, Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. Now with this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, this is Luke speaking, I too decided to write an orderly account to you. And here's who he's writing it to, most excellent Theophilus. So that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. This gospel of Jesus Christ is a reality. It actually happened in history. There was a day when the Savior was born, and he was born in a specific place, in a manger in Bethlehem, right? This is not fake news. It is real news. Heard the story about Francis of Assisi back in uh, twelve, the year 1224. He built the very first Christmas manger. And the purpose was, in his heart, he wanted to help people begin thinking of Christ as a real person who actually lived, who entered into history, rather than this mysterious, fictional deity. And people in our day, listen, this, is, this breaks my heart, people in our day need to understand what Francis was trying to get across. And that is the historical truth of the Christian faith, the historical reality of the birth of Jesus Christ. You know why that's important? Because our culture promotes the idea that if you want to believe in Christ, well, it's okay for you, but not for everyone. Whoever, who, whatever you believe is true for you, and whatever I believe is true for me, but there's no such thing as absolute truth, and our culture teaches that. But I would beg to differ with that point of view. Because if Jesus was born in history to the Virgin Mary, if Jesus fulfilled prophecies made about him years before his birth, if the events of his birth, his life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension are verified by hundreds of reliable witnesses, including Luke himself, how can a person just shrug this off as a nice story that's True for you, but not for me. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. He is the Savior of the whole entire world, and he was born in actual history. And that's good news, and that brings great joy. Amen? Amen. Number three is this. The news about the Savior brings great joy because it is news about Messiah, the Lord. Back in Luke chapter 2, again, it says, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, or the Christ. He is the Lord. He is the Messiah. Christ is the Greek. Christ is not Jesus' last name. Did you know that? Okay. Christ is the, is the Greek word uh, that means anointed one. It means that God sent, God the Father sent and anointed Jesus for the mission of salvation. He, anointed, he was anointed as a prophet to preach the kingdom. He was anointed as a priest to sacrifice for sins. And he was anointed as king to reign. And you think about this. Jesus Christ was fully, was and is fully God, 100% God. And he was fully 100% man who, who was without sin. And because of that, he, was, he alone is able to reconcile sinful people to God the Father. This is the gospel. This is the power of the blood of Jesus. This is the power of him giving his life as a sacrifice on the cross and his glorious resurrection. Hallelujah. Number four is this. The news about the Savior brings great joy because it's for everybody. It's for all people. The angel said that this news was not just for the shepherds, right? It was for all people. Young people, 
old people, everybody in between, rich people, poor people, everybody in between, the outcast of society, the in crowd of society, people from every single nation, people from every color, different backgrounds, everybody, all people are included in this. The Savior was born for every single person. Paul put it like this in Romans chapter 11. He says, as scripture says, anyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. Do you hear the allness in that? You hear the inclusivity in that? Look at this last sentence. It says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Every single person. If that doesn't bring great joy, I don't know what does. Okay, this is a good place just to say, hey, Pastor Brian, this is good Christmas preaching right here. Okay, yeah. (laughs) Guys, let me tell you the truth. There's only one thing powerful enough to transform hearts. There's only one thing that's powerful enough to, to change us from the inside out and to deliver us from the curse and the penalty of sin. And it is the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is what Christmas is all about. This is what Christmas is all about. Romans chapter 1. This is the last verse I'm going to leave you with. But it says this. and I'm going to invite the worship team to come back up now. Romans chapter 1, Paul said this, I am not ashamed of the gospel. I am not ashamed of the good news of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it is the power of God unto salvation that brings salvation to everyone, look, who, what? Believes. First to the Jew, he said, then to the Gentile, for in the gospel the righteousness of God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from the first to the last. It is by faith from the very beginning to the very end. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Amen? This world is going to give us and offer us some kind of superficial happiness, right? You do this, you'll be happy. You buy this, you'll be happy. But listen, listen to the truth of it all. The only way to know deep and abiding joy is to be reconciled to God by receiving his gift of Jesus Christ. This is the greatest gift you could, that was ever given. It is the greatest gift that you and I could ever receive. And friends, my brothers and my sisters, don't miss the circus for the parade. Don't miss the main event because you got distracted with all the secondary stuff. And here's the last point if you're taking notes with me. The great joy of Christmas comes through receiving God's gift of the Savior, Christ the Lord. Amen? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes just for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for what it means. Thank you, Lord, that we can gather together and celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the truth of the gospel. Thank you, Lord, that we were dead in our sins, but you showed up and made us alive in Christ because of your great love, because of your grace and your mercy. Lord, we don't want to be people who miss the main event. But we want to be people who are focused on the true meaning of what Christmas is all about. And friends, if you're here today and you've never received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and your Savior, you've never repented of your sins, you've never turned back to God, or maybe you've drifted away from Him, but today He's drawing you back. I want to pray a prayer. And I want you, everybody just to pray it after me. But if that's you, I want you to pray this from your heart. Heavenly Father, I repent for being master of my own life. And 
living separate from you. I confess today with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. I welcome you, Holy Spirit, into my life to rescue and empower me and to restore me to intimacy with my Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? If you prayed that prayer, I just want to encourage you to do a few things. Really, it's more than an encouragement. It's an urging. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a very strong urging, okay? I want to encourage you. Mark, let us know on your connection card that you made this spiritual decision in your spiritual life today. We want to send you resources. We want to follow up with you. We want to call you and talk to you if you want, if you want to. We want to be there to help you grow in your faith. Number two is this, sign up to get baptized. We've got baptisms coming up in January. Mark that again on your connection card. Sign up to be baptized. And it's, it, it is a wonderful thing to publicly declare Jesus Christ is Lord. And he has changed my life. So if you've never been baptized, I want you to sign up today. And finally, make church attendance a priority. I know we get busy in life and we could much rather do other things on a Sunday, but I just want you to, I wanted to encourage you and ask you, would you make church attendance a priority, a non-negotiable for you and your family? We need to gather together. As the day approaches where Jesus Christ is going to return, you know he's coming back, right? And he's not coming back as a little baby this time, he's coming back as our risen Lord. He's coming back with fire in his eyes and a sword in his hand. Okay, he's coming back, and we need to be ready. We need to be a people who are prepared, and that's why church attendance is so very, very vital to us. Amen? All right. Let me say a closing prayer for us. The team is going to uh, play some upbeat music for us as we, as we uh, leave today. But, Father God, we do thank you for the true meaning of Christmas, and I bless your people, my friends, your sons and daughters, Lord. I bless your people, Lord, to be people who know and live out the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us today, Lord. Help us where we're weak. Give us wisdom to make good decisions in this Christmas season. It's in your holy name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Let's give the Lord praise today.